we can have a look at reading points from a graph. So here I have the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. I've already drawn it for you. I drew it out by taking some values for x, plunking them in that equation, working out the y, drawing up that sort of table of values, then plotting the points on the graph, joining them up. So I've drawn it for you already. Before we start reading points, I just want to go through a little vocab. We call this kind of graph a straight line graph for obvious reasons. And another way we can say straight line graph is to say linear graph. So you'll often hear that term used. And then this graph here is an increasing graph. And we call it increasing because as the x values go up, as they increase, so the y values also go up and increase. And really what you can see is basically it's increasing because as you move from left to right, the graph is going up. So it's an increasing graph. Okay, let's get to what we want to, which is reading points from the graph. If I ask, what is the y coordinate on the graph when x is 3? What I want to do then is look from where x is 3 and see where, did, where is that on the graph. Well, it's over there. Now all I need to do is read off the y value. And I can see that when x is 3, that pink point, its y value is 5. So reading from the graph, I get that the y value is 5. I can also get this by using the equation. You see, every single point that is on that line must fulfill this equation y is equal to 2x minus 1. That's how I drew up the graph, right? I substituted in the x value, got the y value, and then plotted the point. So every point on that graph must fulfill that equation. So I can easily work out the y value when x is 3 by simply substituting x is 3 into the equation and I will work out that y is equal to 5. So two ways of doing it. All right, what if I want to know the x coordinate on the graph when y is negative 9? Well again, I want to see where we are on the graph when you've got a y value of negative 9. So I go across and I see it's there. That point has a y value of negative 9. Now I want to know what that point's x value is, right? How far left is that point? Well, I can just look up and see, ah oh yes, that point is 4 units to the left. It's at negative 4. And so reading from the graph, I get x is negative 4. But again, I could use the equation because remember, every single point on the graph must obey the equation y is equal to 2x minus 1. Now in this case, I know the y value. So in place of y, I can put negative 9. And then I've got a simple equation to work out, right? Add 1 to both sides, I'll get negative 8 is 2x. And so then I'll get negative 4 is x, which I can write nicely as x equal to negative 4. Okay, let's look at some more. We need some vocab again first. When we talk about a y-intercept, we mean the point where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis. So the y-intercept is going to be the point where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis. And unsurprisingly, the x-intercept is going to be the point where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. Let's look at an example here. What is the y-intercept of the graph? Well, the y-intercept, remember, is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So look at that y-axis, and can you see where the graph is crossing the y-axis? Over there. And straight away, we can read off from the graph that the y value is negative 1. What is the x value there? Well, you're on the y-axis. 
That means you haven't moved anywhere left or right. So your x value is 0. So the point where you cross where the y-intercept is, where you cross the y-axis, is the point where the x value is 0 and the y value is negative 1 in this case. Now we can also do it by using the equation. The one thing we know for sure about a y-intercept is that it has to be sitting on the y-axis. And if it's sitting on the y-axis, we know we haven't moved left or right, and so the x value is 0. And because it's on the graph, it must fulfill the equation y is equal to 2x minus 1. And so we can substitute 0 into that equation, and we'll work it out. 2 times 0 is 0, subtract 1. And we get our answer of negative 1. And so we've got the same thing we got, obviously, from reading it off the graph, that the y-intercept has an x value of 0 and a y value of negative 1. It's that point, 0, negative 1. OK, what about the x-intercept of a graph? Well, x-intercept again, where you cross the x-axis. So have a look at that x-axis, and can you see where the graph is cutting the x-axis? Well, you can see, hopefully quite easily, that it's cutting the x-axis at the point half zero. So that's where it is. And why is zero for y? Well, obviously, you're on the x-axis, right? So you haven't gone anywhere up or down, so your y value is zero. And that's an important point, right? Your x-intercept will happen when your y-value is 0, because if you're on the x-axis, your y-value is 0. And this is going to help us if we want to try and work out the x-intercept by using the equation. We know that the x-intercept has to be on the x-axis, and on the x-axis, you haven't moved up or down, and so the y-value is 0. And so, we also know the point is on the graph, so it must obey the equation y is equal to 2x minus 1. And so we can put 0 in place of y in that equation. And now we just have to solve that equation, and we will get that x is a half.